Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. on a Friday, June 16th, 2023. And welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we have no sponsors, no hidden agendas, and no BS. But I do have a programming note for you, so let's get to that. I'm taking the next couple of nights off the show for my wife's birthday. I'm rather glad she's alive, so we're going to celebrate that. I will be back on Monday night. Now tonight, we begin with a CDBC alert in Colombia. Ripple is teaming up with Banco de la Republica and Peersist to explore the transformative potential of blockchain technology. This pilot program aims to educate public entities about the power of blockchain and its unique attributes. Ripple's journey is not without its legal challenges. The company faces an ongoing lawsuit filed by the SEC. We'll delve into the details and discuss the implications. Next, we turn our attention to Binance as they face regulatory challenges in France and in Netherlands. The Paris Public Prosecutor's Office is investigating Binance for alleged illegal activities. At the same time in the Netherlands, Binance's failure to secure a VASP license has led to significant changes for Dutch users. We'll uncover the impact of these developments on Binance and the wider crypto industry. But that's not all. The FDIC is making headlines with its challenges to OKCoin OK over misleading statements. We'll uncover the details of this regulatory battle and its implications for customer accounts. And speaking of regulatory battles, we'll bring you the latest on the SEC's fight against Terraform Labs, exploring the definition of an investment contract and its potential impact on the crypto industry. And lastly, we'll dive into a heated debate between billionaire investor Mark Cuban and the SEC. Cuban is raising concerns about the SEC's approach to regulating the crypto industry and calling for clearer guidelines. He also wants modifications to support startups better. We'll explore the different perspectives and discuss the future of crypto regulation. Get ready for an action-packed episode filled with regulatory challenges, legal battles, and thought-provoking discussion. Ripple is joining forces with Colombia's central bank Banco de la Republica and Peersist to launch a pilot program to explore the use of blockchain technology. The program is set to run until the end of 2023. It will be overseen by Colombia's Ministry of Information and Communications Technologies. The initiative will utilize Ripple's newly introduced central bank digital currency platform, which operates on the XRP ledger. The pilot program's announcement was made on June 15th. It outlined the project's main objective, educate public entities at both national and territorial levels about the potential of blockchain technology. The program aims to showcase how blockchain's unique attributes, such as its speed, scalability, and transparency, can transform payment systems and data management. The XRP Ledger CDBC platform is also being used for similar pilot projects in Hong Kong, Bhutan, Palau, and Montenegro. Aside from Ripple's ongoing expansion, the company is currently facing legal issues. In 2020, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple. That suit alleges that the company sold $1.3 billion worth of unregistered securities in the form of its XRP token. Ripple countered these claims. They said that XRP is not a security and that the SEC did not provide any prior notice or warning about the lawsuit. The company has reportedly spent $200 million defending itself against that suit. Which is always the point, right? Starve the company of money so that the government wins without really fighting. The trial's conclusion remains uncertain, but it is widely speculated that the release of the so-called Hinman documents could influence the remaining legal proceedings. These documents refer to internal SEC communications about a 2018 speech given by William Hinman, the former director of the SEC's corporate finance division. In his speech, Hinman suggested that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether might initially be considered securities but could later be classified as commodities as they become more decentralized. The SEC expressed concern at the time that Hinman's documents could complicate the agency's ability to adopt a different stance on Ether in the future. Although his speech was delivered before the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple and it did not directly mention XRP, experts believe it indicates that even the SEC recognized the ambiguity surrounding the agency's treatment of crypto. While Ripple expands its initiatives, another major player in the crypto world is facing regulatory challenges. 
And this is our cover story for tonight. And before we get to it, I'd like to ask you to like, follow, and subscribe to the podcast. It makes a big difference in attracting new people to the show. So thank you for that. Binance faces legal challenges in France and the Netherlands. In France, the Paris Public Prosecutor's Office confirmed Binance's French unit is under investigation for the illegal provision of digital asset services. They're also accused of acts of aggravated money laundering. The allegations relate to the illegal operation of a digital service asset provider and money laundering activities to include investment operations, concealment, and conversion. These activities were allegedly carried out by perpetrators who generate profits from the offenses. Binance is registered as a digital asset service provider with the French financial regulator. However, it is suspected of having solicited French customers through its local arm outside the legal framework until 2022. The Paris public prosecutor has confirmed that an investigation into Binance was referred to the anti-financial crime arm of the government in February of 2022. The evidence collected during the investigation will now be subject to an in-depth study. In response to the investigation, Binance said that it is fully cooperative. Binance said that it meets its regulatory obligations. The company also stressed it invests considerable time and resources into cooperating with law enforcement globally and abides by all laws in France as it claims to do in every other market that it operates in. Meanwhile, Binance announced its departure from the Netherlands after failing to secure the Dutch regulator's virtual asset service provider license. This license would have confirmed that the company meets anti-money laundering guidelines. As of July 17th, Dutch residents will only be able to withdraw their funds from the platform. No new users residing in the Netherlands will be accepted. Existing Dutch resident users will not be able to make further purchases trades, or deposits. So the only thing you can do is withdraw. Binance had been in a comprehensive registration application process as a VASP with the Dutch regulator. Despite exploring many alternative avenues to service Dutch residents in compliance with Dutch regulations, Binance was unable to secure a VASP registration in the Netherlands. The company is currently sending out emails to Dutch customers with comprehensive information about the next steps they need to take with their Binance accounts. These developments come as Binance faces multiple lawsuits in the United States, and we were just talking about how they plan to leave Cyprus to focus on becoming fully compliant with their new EU rules on crypto assets, namely MICA, the Markets and Crypto Assets legislation that was just signed into law this month. Now, despite these challenges, Binance maintains that it is compliant with EU standards on preventing money laundering and financing of terrorism rules. It cited its registration in EU countries such as France, although maybe they shouldn't have mentioned that one, Italy, Spain, Poland, Sweden, and Lithuania as evidence of its compliance. Regulatory scrutiny extends beyond Binance. Let's now turn our attention to another case, this time involving the FDIC and OKCoin. The U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation ordered OKCoin to remove misleading statements from its site that suggests its customers' accounts are protected by the FDIC. OKCoin USA is a San Francisco-based sister exchange to OKX. The FDIC has accused them of making false claims. The FDIC warned that if OKCoin does not comply, it could face enforcement action for violating U.S. banking law. The FDIC's letter to OKCoin CEO Hong Feng stated that OKCoin is not FDIC-insured and the agency does not insure non-deposit products. They are concerned that OKCoin's OK statements do not distinguish between U.S. dollar deposits and crypto assets, implying FDIC insurance coverage applies to all customer funds, including crypto assets, which we know to be untrue. The FDIC pointed out three instances of false and misleading representations by OKCoin. OK One was a claim on their website that Providence Blockchain's hash token on OKCoin OK had, quote, received broad regulatory acceptance from the SEC, OCC, Fed, and the FDIC. Another was a 2020 post on the company's website where it advertised itself as, quote, licensed across the U.S. with FDIC insurance on OKCoin OK accounts. The third instance was a tweet from a company official stating that if you are in the U.S., we offer FDIC insurance on USD deposits. This is not the first time the FDIC has issued such orders. It previously sent similar orders to Voyager Digital and FTX US. The latter's then-CEO, Brett Harrison, suggested in a tweet that the company was covered by the regulator. And we covered it on this show when the FDIC issued a broader warning to the crypto sector, 
stating that FDIC protections are only for banks. They are not for crypto firms that have FDIC-insured bank accounts. In response to the FDIC's order, a spokesperson for OKCoin stated that a core principle at the company is to respect applicable laws and regulations. The company is committed to collaborating with stakeholders, including regulators, whenever possible. OKCoin is aware of the issue and taking immediate action to assess the statements flagged by the FDIC and address them as necessary. The battle between the SEC and Terraform Labs is heating up. Let's delve into the details. The legal battle between the US SEC and Terraform Labs is picking up speed. Now, listeners of the show should recognize that Terraform Labs is the company behind TerraUSD or UST. Now, the core of this dispute lies in the definition of an investment contract and whether this term applies to UST. Terraform Labs, represented by the Denton's Law Firm, argues that UST is not a security because it was designed for practical uses, not as an investment. This argument is similar to those made by other token issuers in their defense against the SEC's claims that their crypto assets are securities. Conversely, the SEC maintains that the broader ecosystems of these tokens, not the tokens themselves, form the basis of its analysis. The SEC's stance is that the expectations of investors and the economic realities surrounding the UST token led to its assertion of securities violations. The SEC sued Terraform Labs, alleging the company and its founder, Do Kwan, misled investors in the Terra USD project. The SEC also alleges that Terraform's Anchor Protocol and Luna token are also securities. In response to these allegations, Terraform Labs moved to dismiss the charges in April. They argued the SEC had not asserted jurisdiction over the company or Quan. The company's defense also includes disputes related to the Administrative Procedures Act and the Major Questions Doctrine. The defense argues that a decentralized group controls UST through the Luna token, similar to Bitcoin, and therefore should not be considered a security. The SEC's lawyers have challenged the additional documents submitted by Denton's in support of its motion to dismiss the lawsuit. These documents include a transcript from a hearing on the SEC's motion for a temporary restraining order against Binance US, as well as the House Financial Services Committee hearing on digital asset regulation and stablecoin issuance, and the Hinman documents we were just talking about from the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. The SEC's counsel argues these documents are irrelevant to the current case. The defense also pointed to the Supreme Court's recent West Virginia versus EPA decision. This decision said Congress must authorize any major actions from federal agencies if they are far afield from what's seen as the agency's traditional remit. However, the SEC argues this decision only prevents agencies from creating extraordinary new rules. Their claim is the SEC is merely enforcing existing law. The case is currently presided over by Senior Judge Jed Ratkoff of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. He has announced that a ruling on the motion to dismiss will be published on or before July 14th. This case is significant. It could set a precedent for classifying digital assets under security law. That will have far-reaching implications for the cryptocurrency industry. Notable figures in the crypto world are expressing their opinions on regulatory approaches. Let's hear what Mark Cuban has to say. Mark Cuban recently voiced his concerns about the SEC's approach to regulating the crypto industry. He believes the current approach leaves entrepreneurs and startups without clear guidance, hindering their growth and development. Particularly, he criticized the complex rules that startups, especially those in the Web3 sector, have to follow. Cuban suggested that the SEC and Congress should create a basic registration system for tokens in exchanges. This system, he believes, would benefit both startups and industry giants, while also protecting investors. He expressed his concerns on Twitter, stating that the businesses most affected by the SEC's approach are these small startups that are driven by sweat equity. Cuban also called for Congress to modify the exemptions available to this technology so registration is clear and the path for exchanges is manageable. He believes that this can be done in a way that protects investors and allows the industry to grow. He also argued that the SEC should not be making judgment calls on whether certain technologies are valid. I'm with Mark on this one. John Reed Stark is the former chief of the SEC Office of Internet Enforcement. He disagreed with Cuban's argument about the lack of regulatory clarity. He said litigation enforcement are just how securities regulation works. 
He also said that while the SEC registration process is difficult, tough financial regulation makes for a safer and more trustworthy marketplace. However, he did agree with Cuban on the barriers to entry for startups, acknowledging that regulation can be burdensome and unreasonable. Cuban and Stark's debate continued on Twitter, where Cuban accused Stark of misinterpreting the impact of the SEC's recent legal action against Binance. Cuban blamed SEC Chair Gary Gensler's regulation via litigation approach for sabotaging crypto startups. Stark defended the SEC's actions against Binance, noting that the industry remains largely unregulated and the move will eliminate bad actors and promote transparency. The debate then shifted to how best to regulate cryptocurrencies. Stark argued that crypto assets should not be treated as pink sheets or stocks. Cuban disagreed, suggesting tokens could be treated similarly to other securities and that the SEC should propose clearer regulations for them. Despite the heated debate, Cuban remains supportive of the crypto industry. He believes that while many blockchain companies and tokens will fail, those that succeed will be game changers. He also coined the term crypto derangement syndrome to best describe an irrational hatred of crypto stating that it is as big a problem as those who overhype its potential. So what happened? On tonight's episode, we started with the CDBC alert in Colombia, where Ripple is partnering with Banco de la Republica and Peersist to explore blockchain technology's potential in transforming payment systems. The pilot program seeks to educate public entities about the benefits of blockchain, such as speed, scalability, and transparency. Ripple's CDBC platform is also being used in similar pilot projects in Hong Kong, Bhutan, Palau, and Montenegro. However, Ripple is currently facing legal issues with an ongoing lawsuit filed by the SEC regarding the sale of unregistered securities. Moving on, we discussed Binance's regulatory challenges in France and the Netherlands. The Paris Public Prosecutor's Office is investigating Binance's French unit for alleged illegal provision of digital asset services and acts of money laundering. Binance's failure to secure a virtual asset service provider license in the Netherlands resulted in restrictions on its services for Dutch residents. Despite these challenges, Binance maintains its compliance with EU standards on preventing money laundering and terrorism financing. Next, we highlighted the FDIC's order to OKCoin to remove misleading statements. The FDIC expressed concerns about OKCoin's claims of FDIC insurance coverage for customer accounts which did not distinguish between U.S. dollar deposits and crypto assets. OKCoin restated its commitment to collaborating with regulators and taking immediate action to address the flagged statements. In the legal battle between the SEC and Terraform Labs, we explored the definition of an investment contract and its application to TerraUSD. Terraform Labs argues that UST is not a security, but a practical use token, similar to other token issuers facing SEC claims. The outcome of this case could have significant implications for how digital assets are classified under securities law. Lastly, we covered Mark Cuban's criticism of the SEC's regulatory approach. He called for clearer guidelines and modified exemptions to provide regulatory clarity for startups in the crypto industry. Cuban's concerns revolved around the complex rules that hinder the growth and development of small startups. Throughout the episode, we highlighted the importance of understanding the evolving regulatory landscape and its impact on the crypto industry's growth and development. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating, or maybe a review. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.